We're going to make this work. Hey! Yay. Yay. Good job, Lexi. I was like, oh, we're never going to get this. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, how's it going over there for you guys? It's yeah. the evening. Good evening, I guess. Good evening, yeah. It's, it's 8 o'clock. Yeah, it's three here, so... Not not quite as bad as Australia. I poor Brett made him wake up at like seven in the morning yeah, to talk. Yeah. To him, so I tried earlier and he was like, no. So Yeah. You're doing so, well. Yeah. So it was fun. It was cool to see everyone. You know, I haven't actually talked to anyone on the phone or, or you know, face to face. Yeah, just through yeah. emails and Facebook. So you forget what it's like to actually speak to people. So Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, um, what's going on with you in Ireland? How's everything treating you with the situation we're in and everything? Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit stressful, isn't it? Like people can't get around. We're not too bad. We have the farm, so we're kind of looking after the animals and um, breed and the start to pick up and stuff. So we're, we're kept occupied, you know. But it's um, it's pretty scary times, isn't it? It is. It's different, right? Yeah. Who would have yeah. thought this would be something we were like going through, like, you yeah. know, little yeah. things that you took for granted, like going to the grocery store, you know. Go to the yeah. restaurant. Yeah, it's like a whole, you know, complete, I went to the grocery store yesterday and I had to like plan it out. <laughs> it took forever and, yeah. you know, you have to wear everything. So it's pretty crazy around here. So for everyone joining us, um, I'm Caroline, like I said before, from Diamond Creek. And uh, with me is Derek Delaney, who is the, would you call yourself the general manager or just manager of Oakwood? Yeah, yeah, many hats. <laughs> many hats. Yeah, okay, yeah. among many hats he wears, yeah. one yeah. of them, the two of them being the manager of Oakwood Stud in Ireland. And also, um, are you the chairman of the FDM committee? Like, yeah, what's the, the official the, title? The, yeah, the chairman of the FDM committee. Yeah. So Derek wears many hats. Um, and you also have a car business, right? That's right, yeah. We sell yeah. Um, Yields vehicles. Right, <laughs> so you've got many different hats yeah, you yeah. to your basis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of look after myself and my brother James um, own the boat businesses. So I kind of look after the day to day with the store, and he looks after the day to day with the, with the vans. And then, sure, we, we join forces then when we need to be as well, like, you know. Perfect. So, Derek, um, for everyone that's watching that doesn't really know you or anything about you, you should tell us a little bit about yourself, obviously, um, in case people don't hear the accent. You're obviously from Ireland. Yeah. Uh, Did you you know, right? I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. I'm waiting yeah. for people to start, like, putting subtitles in, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see how we go. Um, yeah, no, I'm from, originally, I was born in Dublin, Ireland, and, um, I moved to the Midlands probably about 20 years ago. So I'm 43 years old. I'm the general manager of Oakwood Stud in Ireland and I'm the chairman of the Fili Vincent Delaney Memorial as well. And um, yeah, so that's it, kind of. Yeah, and so you have a, nice, a lovely wife, Lillian, and a yeah, yeah. lovely daughter, Lexi, yeah. Lexi, who very nicely just helped us get working on the phone. So. Yeah, she started out the technology. Yeah, you need that, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so going into a little bit about Oakwood Stud, um, I know you and your brother James are, like, the co-owners of Oakwood. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about, like, the history of Oakwood? Um, I know we're going to get into, like, the Vincent Delaney Memorial a little bit, too, and Vincent, um, but if you want to kind of touch on, you know, the start of Oakwood Stud, and, you know, where it is now as well, so. Yeah. Well, we've always, besides my brother James, we've always had a, an interest in horses since we were kids. And um, we were kind of around uh, Trotton Stable in Dublin. There's a part of Graceways in Dublin, and we kind of grew up probably four or five miles from the track. And we used to um, help out in the, the Newtown Stables when we were younger. And um, we kind of went apart from that or whatever. And then somehow later on, and a few years down the road, we ended up looking for a hobby, and it ended up being Trotton. And, um, we um, went in and bought a, a pacing horse, and um, that was 20 years ago, and the rest is history now. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah, we, so we, we, we always had an interest in breeding horses, but only on a, a hobby-type basis. Mm -hmm. and 
um, we we bred a couple of mares, and we we're always interested in improving the breed and improving our breeding and stuff like that. But it was only kind of a, a, a minority sport in Ireland, and there wasn't much for breeding and stuff like that. So it's only kind of since probably two thousand and twelve that we um, set up and we got we, we leased our four stallion in that went like a sub one fifty stallion and shared it the light. He was toured in the Maryland's pace. We got him in in 2014 then, and then we kind of just went from there. Um, I think the building blocks from the whole thing was, obviously, like, there's a lot of stage races here that all contributes to breeding, but the Vincent and Annie Memorial has definitely had a knock-on effect. People, there's a lot of hype around the race, and people want to win it, so it's encouraging people to breed, and it's encouraging people to buy yearlings, so therefore it's, it's, it's helping the breeding in Ireland. Um, was setting up the festival sort of a direct correlation to why you guys went from just like owning some broodmares to like deciding to stand stallions? Like what made you kind of make that big step forward until, you know, now you're importing semen from the U.S.? Like what, what made you go from just being like, I just want a couple mares to let's try this stallion business kind of thing? Yeah, it's something we're passionate about. Like we're passionate about breeding and we always look at, we like to see good racing and we're, we're race, racing fans and we like to see good horses racing and that's, you know, what we're interested in. So we, we figured if um, we bought some mares, we imported some mares from America and we figured if we could get upgraded stallions like um, and basically breed good horses, we want to see good racing here in Ireland for everybody, you know? Yeah. That was, kind of, that was kind of the step. And that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know, obviously, you guys have the, and we'll kind of go a little bit about the fresh first frozen semen in Ireland, but um, currently, I know you guys have the Sweet Lou and Always Be Mickey frozen, uh, yeah. and distributors for that in Ireland, as well as the UK, correct? That's correct, yeah. And then you also, do you still have foreclosure, um, but he's standing in the UK this no, he year? No, he stood in the UK last year. He's standing at, okay. at Ayers now this year in Ireland. Is that everyone you have right now? Is that your styling roster? Yeah, that's what we have for Crowers right in, and then we have the Frozen Salmon for obviously Mickey and for Sweet Lou. Okay. Um, and then, so I guess we'll just start like right off um, talking about a little bit. It's sort of, um, you know, I was talking about Brett from Alabar a little bit about the Frozen First Fresh um, and how they have, um, uh, well, I forget what I was saying. Um, how they use like they try to use mostly fresh, but they use frozen if they have to. But I, I think Ireland is a little bit different, where you said most people actually are prefer the frozen and they aren't used to the chilled semen. Um, or is that am I thinking that wrong? Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah right. It, the, like the frozen semen, it's it's the stallions that we can't like. Obviously, we hadn't got here until Diamond Creek um, helped us and sent us semen from Sweet Leo. Um, people are going to breed to the frozen salmon because you don't have a great cho choice of um, top bred stallions in in the UK or Ireland. There is stallions and there's some quite good stallions, but mm -hmm. up in that kind of a standard and caliber of horse, it, it wasn't here. So people always want the best, don't they? So they're going to want what the frozen salmon from the likes of horses like champions like Sweet Leo and obviously Mickey and stuff like that. So that's encouraged them to use the frozen salmon more so because. The choice is limited, I suppose, in the UK and Ireland. Mm -hmm. With the fresh, yeah. And I know well, you guys well, have, yeah. um, like, um, do you do the frozen yourself at Oakwood? I know James did some classes um, and, yeah. and got certificates and training for it. So you guys yeah. actually do it yourself? Do, do people yeah. bring mares there? or we, we, don't, we don't use the frozen. We have, like, we have vets in mm -hmm. Ireland and okay. across Ireland and the UK that we... Um, we just work with those vets, so if people want to use the frozen semen, they have to go to those AI centers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some really good good people in the industry that's in the sport horse. He uses a lot of frozen semen over here, so they're pretty good and pretty good success for it as well, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you guys did pretty well with the Lou's last year and the Mickey's too, so I know yeah. someone asked if any there are any Mickey's in the UK yet, but not yet, right? You think no, you're, no, you're going to have to the, Yeah, there's one foul bar and one parts and they passed away, so we're we're waiting, still waiting. You think you might have one of the first, right, on your farm? Well, there's a cut. I think there's probably three or four that's right in the fall, so we'll see who comes first, you know? I know everyone always gets very excited in the U.S. when they see the painted, the, what do you call them? The the, we, the paint we, one. We, yeah, we, we just scale balls or pie balls. Oh, or yeah. 
Pe Penta was a, is, is a word. Penta, that's right. Yeah, it's not right. registered. Because yeah. yeah. that's something we would never see here. So seeing a sweet loo with all that color is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, and there's, there's some there's some Penta mares in Falda, obviously, Mickey as well. So, um, oh, well, we'll see. People, people are interested in that. Yeah, people, it's different. People. Yeah. Yes. Those are pretty fun. Um, and then, so talking about like breeding in Ireland and how it's a little bit different from the U.S., um, would you say like in Ireland, people are more breeding to s keep them themselves in race, or do you think it's more like a yearling sale? Um, um, I think it's very about. Okay. Um, like the, the, the yearling prices, like I just said, like the yearling prices are getting better and they're getting stronger. Yeah. And it's making sense for breeders now and for people that's kind of bred commercially like they're um, be using the stallions like obviously Mickey and Sweet Leo and mm -hmm. stuff and they're going forward. So yeah, it's getting more commercial. And then there's also like horses that's been bred now, like the horses that's been, the, the breed has improving over here the last decade or wherever. And, um, the horses are getting better and better and the horses being exported there recently to the US to Ron Bork, Mark Reeve, of course, the six horses from the UK and Ireland. So um it's 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 proven to be good for breeders because there's 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 life usually over here after two year old racing, three year old racing, four year old racing, there's not really a whole lot of horse money for them. So it's good that there's somewhere an outlet for those horses like that. Yeah. For, for the for the owners, you know. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, I know, you know, it's pretty common that people import, you know, mares and stuff from, you know, Australia, New Zealand. So the fact that now they're coming to the UK and Ireland for it as well is a good sign. Yeah. I know we've seen a couple, um, and uh, I, Meticulous is now yeah, on the, and the Robin. Won the Vincent Delaney Memorial. Yeah. And then yeah. Robin Camden, right? Yeah, she, she was, won the, she won yeah. the Philly was at the Vincent And then, Reclamation, even though she was U.S. bred, she was in Ireland for a little bit, and then she came over. Yeah, Phil, Don Phil Donovan from the U.S. owns uh, Reclamation, and yeah. he goes in Ireland every year in the U.S., and he sends her over to the U.K. to be trained to race on the Vincent Delaney Memorial. So that's that's cool. Yeah, so that's cool that we're seeing more of those horses show up here, um, especially, yeah. you know, with the Burke Brigade buying into a lot of them. And I, I know yeah. you had a part in that, so... Yeah, then yeah, no, we got them out. Yeah, but yeah, it's good. It's good. It's, it's good. It's good for the owners. That the yeah, summer. for sure. No, they, can, they, can, they, they can bring more money than the war tier anyway. So it's it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's exciting. It's exciting to see them race. Well, hopefully, see them race in the US soon. Yeah, yeah, soon. It's hopefully May. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, and then as far as like your sales go, like, do you guys have one kind of big yearling sale or is it, like a couple little ones? Like how, what's your big, um, like yearling thing? Cause we have two, obviously Harrisburg and Lexington. Yeah. There's, there's, there's two, there had been two sales up the, up until this year. And um, there's one of the biggest ones was Bright Wells and that's down in Wales. And, um, that's been going, I think it's been going for around 30 years, but it's just, it's actually the equine department of the auctioneers is actually being um, withdrawn now. So they're not doing any more equine sales. So that's, that's a big loss. And um, this year it's at the standard bread, but there's a sale in York and um, Harness Racetrack as well. So Candom Stud, they run that sale and it's been running for years as well. So they're, they're probably just going to be one major um, sale in the UK now, which will be York Raceway. Yeah, do you think that might be a good thing as like driving people all to the one sale or do you think it will hurt the price? Yeah, it might, it might be a good thing. Like, you know, people would be a bit skeptical of it because they're used to um, being two sales. But then, yeah. give, as you say, if all the horses are under the one roof and all the, the, the buyers are there, it might be a good thing. Right. Um, and then as far as um, bloodlines, I know you talked about how you brought over some U.S. mares. I know you bought a couple. I know you guys came to Harrisburg a couple of years ago and, like, we're adding them to the shopping cart left and right. So yeah, yeah, how long was that? 2016, 17, I think. How many mares did you guys actually end up bringing back to Ireland with you? Seven. Seven? I thought it was more than that. The whole no, group. seven. There was, there was <laughs> no, seven. Just, just seven. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite expensive. Like it's, it's approximately seven thousand euros to fly one home. So it was it was forty nine thousand euros to fly to seven of them mares home. But okay. on that on that flight from Harrisburg, and um, what are people that bought real mares and yearlings that was bought for the VDM and stuff? I think there was um 
there was 27 or 8 horses on that flight so that's pretty cool you guys all just like kind of go together and think oh let's just let's all go on this big trip and buy these horses or <laughs> yeah yeah I think everybody that's be holding a black book tight you don't want to let anyone know <laughs> what they're interested in but no it's pretty much the way it worked and all the bloodlines that's in the UK and Ireland, like they're mainly, they're all driven from the US. Like so, most of the mares, whether they be Ireland, Spartan, Harrisburg, or Lexington, and, and brought over here to race, and then later on, then um, to, to breed or brood mares being bought to breed. Like so, we're basically just mimicking what's in the US, probably uh, uh maybe maybe a middle standard of the mare, I suppose. You know? Yeah, you gotta start somewhere. So yeah, this is it. Um, and then I think it's interesting, something you had said to me the other day that I hadn't really thought about when we were messaging um, you guys. Um, so do you have trotters, like in the UK and Ireland, or not really? Yeah, there's, there's French trotters in the UK and Ireland okay. now. There used to be European trotters here for years, and uh, US um, trotters as well. I wouldn't, you know, there's a race card with 10 races, there might be one trot or something, or maybe two trots, but now um, the La Trot program is subsidising the French horses that's bought out of France. So it's it's it, in Ireland it's it's come on a lot more. Like there's a lot more, you know, on a car there's probably fifty fifty pacers to trotters now. But mm -hmm. only French trotters now now um US or or like European, just French. Yeah. And I think it's interesting. I think when Americans think of, you know, European racing, like you said, we always think of just the trotters and we forget that you guys have pacers. Pacers, yeah. Um, well, they they have have yeah, the UK and Ireland would be the only two countries in in, the, in Europe that would have pacers. Uh, here, I've got a question for you. If you could have access to any sire that's currently standing at stud, who would you like to breed to? Captain Treacherous. Ah, nice answer. <laughs> also a pacer, so. Also a pacer, yeah. <laughs> um, so talking about um, Irish Irish racing, uh, which is obviously a big part. We're obviously going to talk about VDM, but what would you say has changed in the last like five years um, as far as racing in Ireland and the UK in general? Um, I, t I think it's there's definitely more prize money being raised for, you know, and um, probably in the last decade, the, the, the season prize money has probably gone. We used it for a whole season of racing in Ireland in Dublin, like in the in the east and the the north. I think we raised for I remember the race announced a call and a hundred thousand and that was a big deal for the whole year. Um now with the likes of the VDM there's probably a hundred thousand given out over the two days. So that that's a mm -hmm. fast improvement like for for the sport. Um and maybe overall it's probably increased six or seven hundred percent. So that's that's a big thing. And I think we've got I think we've got a lot of recognition all over the world as well. Um, Ireland and maybe through the VDM and through the La Trop, like in Europe and stuff mm -hmm. like that and through the VDM and visitors coming from everywhere and you know it's just high profile people coming into the VDM and drivers and sponsors and um, it's just showing a light on Irish harness racing and it's a fun thing to do, a fun place to go. Yeah, to for, for sure. yeah, yeah, so I think that's a, a recognition I suppose and, and prize money. Um, so, like, how does it work over there as far as um, the racing in between, like, Ireland and, Ireland and the UK? Like, are, is it one circuit? Like, how does it, or do you guys have different kind of circuits? Yeah, more or less, like, the, all the big meetings, as we call them, like, premium meetings, stakes meetings, grand, I suppose you could call it grand circuit. Um, the, the Irish will travel for the UK ones and the UK will travel for the Irish ones. So we, we travel like it's, you can get a ferry from Dublin to Hollyhead and you can be there like in three hours on a boat. So, you know, on a, on a ferry cross. And so that, that's what we do. We, we, we travel our horses to the UK and they travel our horses to Ireland to compete in the likes of the Vincent Delaney Memorial, our, our, our big stakes meet that's been held in the UK. And what's your um, racing season? Like, what is it the summer as well, or? Yeah, it's getting longer every year. They're trying to add a few weeks every right. year, as far as I know. Yeah, so it's it's it was gonna go, I think, from March to November this year. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, are you guys still racing right now, or no? With the no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Um, we're hoping. Well, I think the Irish Hands racing are hoping to to get racing behind closed doors. Um. 
when they don't lift some of the restrictions. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, I know New Zealand still is, is what Brett said, but everyone else is not, so. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's just opening back up, I, I thought, so. Anyway. Yeah, it's hard to keep track of everything right now at yeah, this point. Yeah, like, yeah. Who's shut I, down today? <laughs> like, I can't yeah, yeah. <laughs> all I know is there's not enough. There's not enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess we'll talk a little bit, well, not a little bit, but probably a lot of bit about, um, the Vincent Delaney Memorial, um, which is obviously a huge weekend and a big part of Oakwood Stud and your history. Um, and so if, I don't know if you want to talk about it, or if you want to introduce it, but basically it's a what two day, two day festival racing weekend, um, usually in August. Um, and how many years has, has it been now? It's since it has, this will be the ninth year. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and so it was all started in memory of your brother, Vincent. Yeah, it was, um, a, memorial, it was a memorial race set up for Vincent in 2012. He passed away in 2011, age 27. Um, he had a heart attack, and we wanted to do something in his memory. There was always a memorial. People have memorial races at the track and stuff like that, but we saw my brother James. Um, we wanted to do something different, uh, something that was going to help the sport and have an impact on the sport. So... Um, we decided that there was too much of a gap between when someone um, bred, a, bred a horse like because we were into the breeding. And then, again, you get the horse trained down to sell the horse. There was too much of a space. So, basically, people would only want to buy a race horse and they wouldn't want to take a chance on the bloodlines or buy a yearling. So, we figured we'd have a two-year-old race and we'd have it for good money. And we'd push people towards buying yearlings and, therefore, it should help the breeding. And um, we... Um, Got a lot of sponsorship, a lot of support from the get-go when we had a major um, High Street Bookie sponsor from the start. And um, our first race, was it was a mixed sex two-year-old race. Um, everybody t told us that we are crazy having a two-year-old race in Ireland because we don't have the facilities to train and stuff like that. But we, we, we kept it a game plan and, and we crushed on with it. And, um, we, we said it was going to be for €10,000 and it was for €10,000 and we had um, 29 entries the first year, so it was a big deal. Um, and yeah, and then it went on. We used to have mixed sex race, so it was just one race, and that carried on to 2016, I think, was the first Phillies final, which Diamond Creek sponsored. Mm -hmm. So that allowed us, basically allowed us our numbers to grow. I think at that stage, we were up to around 59, 62-year-olds entering so then we had the Don Creek sponsor the Phillies division and we were able to have the Phillies and the girls the Phillies were able to raise the Phillies and the Colts raised the Colts and now um, Hanover Shoe Farm sponsored the Colts and we have the Phillies and Colts and combined they raise for 50,000 annually so yeah it's a pretty big endeavor. How, when you first started it, how did you go about like getting these sponsors, like from, you know, from us, from Diamond Creek and Hanover, like how did you first ever start reaching out to these, you know, foreigners that you never met before and ask them, yeah, yeah, how did yeah. you go about doing that? <laughs> when, when I show you, when I show you, as was Irish. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, what happened was, um, we just reached out to a few people. Like we reached out to Roger Houston to see where he come because a lot of people follow Roger and follow the little brown jug, the, the American race. And we reached out and asked him would he come over to help raise the profile of the event. And he agreed and he said he loved it and stuff. And he came over and the, the, the race got a lot of media attention. And Steve Wolf from Harness Link, he, yeah. helped and he promoted and it just, it just snowballed. It just, you know, it just, just uh, still to this day, uh, 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 it never fails to amaze me the amount of support that I get from all over the world. Like Alabar, Brett, um, Alan Galloway, they sponsored, Stone Creek sponsored, Hanover sponsored, Year to Be Stood Australia sponsored, New Zealand Harness Racing Association sponsored. Um, just people just want to get behind it and they, yeah. they enjoy the weekend because. Us orders now to have a good party and so <laughs> it's got it's got to be yeah. best for people to enjoy the race and it might not be the, the it might not be the Hamiltonian day or the live round jug where it's air version of it and um it's just people just want to come in behind support and have a good weekend and I don't I don't know really we just got the ball and remember it and this is yeah. up, you know. I think in some ways it's a lot more fun than um 
<clears throat> the Hamiltonian and the other races because you're there, everyone just goes crazy, you know, storms the track, does what they want, you know, it's it's a lot of fun, you know, and, and as, like, as you said, I definitely, I was there in 2017, I think, and then this, 2000, no, 2016, 2018, and I definitely saw an improvement, I don't want to say improvement, because it was already good, but the yeah. ability of the horses is definitely um, improved, for sure. You can definitely see, like, the training yeah. and the breeding, you can definitely see, like, a definite um, yeah. improvement in, like, their ability and, you know, and how how um, competitive they are. It's, kind of, yeah, it's pretty cool to see that. Yeah, the quality the quality is improving year and year. And there's records, the track records are nearly broken, every um, age division and the track record. Like, we had three of our fillies um, last year, got 156 and three. Like, you wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't see top three brawl horses going that kind of times around the track for many years. So, that is a testament to the breed and then to the way things are going forward. Sure. I yeah. think, it's, yeah, every year, you know, something else gets added. It's so much fun. Like, your wife does a wonderful job of, you know, putting together the tents for everyone and um, the competitions with the dresses, Ladies' Day and stuff. And um, I just think it's funny because there's people I, like, Brett, we, I've worked with, with him now for a couple of years, and I never met him in person until I met him in Ireland. So, um, yeah. kind of, it's so funny, like Joe Sabraco, a couple, Bill Donovan, different people I've, you know, spoken to on the phone for years, um, yeah. have never met at a sale, even though we've been in the same area multiple times. So, like suddenly you meet in Ireland, now you're all best friends. <laughs> Yeah. It's just really, it makes it such a small world, I think. Yeah, um, no, it, really, it really does. There's a lot of, there's a lot of yeah, there's a, we've met a lot of, we've met a lot of great people through the race, like, and, you know, from, from worldwide, like, through America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, we've met some great people, and it's, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, it just kind of, as I say, it just kind of filmed. They're just kind of snowballed, but yeah, you know, it's something that we're really proud of, you know, as a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. And every year, you're able to add something else to it. Um, I know, unfortunately, Bernie Kelly passed away, so hopefully, you know, there's going to be a Bernie Kelly race in her honor this year, which is Absolutely. a big deal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you want to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, Ber Bernie Kelly was the secretary of the FDM since the. Well, I never organized a race or I never, we just used to go racing. We were never interested in the other side. Uh, right, someone had to clean up behind you. So. Yeah, yeah, we just wanted to have fun. We just wanted to go to the bar. We didn't want to know. We just wanted to race the horse and go to the bar. But anyway, um, when, when Vince passed away, as I said, we wanted to do something. So I spoke with Bernie Kelly. I had a few ideas. I spoke with Bernie Kelly, and she was administrator for the Irish Harness Racing for – the SHRI, which is the club, the horse owners club and stuff like that. So she had a lot of experience in it. So I, I, kind of, I kind of went and got the, got the sponsorship and got the money and got the ideas. And then I came to um Bernie and then Bernie and um, done her job and she put them the administration and built rules and built the race and and she 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 helped in a great way all the way through. Sure. You know, she, yeah, voluntary as well. Like nobody gets paid. Yeah. Like, everybody does it for the love of the sport. So yeah. For sure. Yeah, sadly she passed away in December. Um, she she was fighting an illness. So, yeah, so yeah, so we're gonna have a race. We're gonna have a Bernie Kelly memorial, and she never wanted two memorials on the one weekend. She said we can't deal with that because it's Vincent's day. <laughs> it's it's um it's 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 different with Bernie. So it's been it's gonna be Bernie's day as well going uh, forward. Yeah. yeah that's we, we 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 don't we're gonna have like a ladies race with with the trotters and and we um we invited Jasmine Arnold the USDA um that I think she won the apprentice um, driver of the year the mm -hmm. Ohio girl and she's gonna come over and drive in the race and stuff like that so we thought we'd do it for the girls this year and shine a bit of spotlight on the women and try to do something um, to honor Bernie's memory for sure um I know someone just asked um. To scroll for a second. What's your vision for the future of the Vincent Delaney Memorial? A vision for the future. I would love to to see. Like we don't we don't have any um any betting off off um we don't have any betting off so like it's only on so on course betting in Ireland. So I would love to see the race um streamed and betted on worldwide. You know that's that's kind of what where I would like to see it, like up there with the Hamiltonian. Or, no, not that, you know, but up, up on that kind of stage where people can have a, 
have a bet at the races and, and help stream revenue back into the into the funds to, to keep sure. it forward and keep raising the stakes. Yeah, I, you're talking about betting, and uh, I think it's interesting for our non-Irish um, listeners. Um, you guys have bookies over there, and it's a whole different experience than what we have in the U.S. We're used to going up to the you know the ticket window and getting your ticket. It's yeah. different if you want to explain the bookies a little bit. I know kids what, used to be what twelve to bet or something. So. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the legal age, but. I wouldn't say I'd say that does happen. Um, no, they're definitely a lot more focal than the air. And, and, and for sure, are. it's That's a whole pressure. experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's coming, Gary. Um, yeah, so basically, the bookmakers stand at the track and they lay odds on, on the on the track, and people bet. Um, they, they bet with the bookie at the track, like basically. So they change the odds, like they they all the book and they um they change the odds as the money goes on the horses and so on. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Like and I think that's something that because it's not in America and stuff like sure. that, that that a lot of people enjoy when they come as well. Yeah, even all yeah, all the it's Americans good. are usually like huddled around, usually yeah. too scared to try it themselves, but watching. So. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. And it's a great atmosphere. There's great banter yeah. around it. Oh, no, it's, good. Like, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, and I think one of the strong things that you guys have done with the memorial is um, you've done a good job marketing it from the get-go. Um, I know you have Peter O'Daughtery who does some wonderful track photography. You got Nabina. Um, and, you know, you have two very good photographers. You, you know, it's, it can be difficult here in the U.S. at a, like a large track to find, you know, videos and pictures of races. Um, it's amazing that like in today's world, you can't stream a race on the internet. So I think you guys have done a good job with the drones and the videos and making sure that people can actually, you know, yeah. watch the races. And, and the last couple of years, we had a production there as well. And we were on Facebook Live and the racing was shown live. And we had Darden Owen and Roger Houston and that young college, Darden Owen is an announcer in the UK and Thoroughbred announcer as well. And he um, he does the interviews and stuff like that and interviews guests. So it brings a lot of professionalism to it as well. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's come on that way. But as I said, the only thing that I feel, I, I don't think we can do a whole lot more as in the, what the festival is and what it's about. I think we have all that end of our eye. And I think, you know, as Bernie said before he passed away, uh, we need to do something about the race. And um, I think that the only way we can do something about the race and is to increase and um, the revenue and that mm -hmm. will push us on some more and then that could be done with um off course betting obviously like um, a percentage of of that will definitely help um bring us to the next level is there because i just i don't know you might have said this is there any off course betting in ireland or is it all or none not not in harness racing okay. Some, okay. Some, like we have um streamed races into the pmu in france french, okay. french French trots like from Dundalk Stadium, which is a thoroughbred all weather track, and they took um, I think four races in. There was a lot of money um, um, wagered as well on those four races, but it's all it's all samples, like it's all kind of um, it's all going to build on towards what the Irish Harness Race Association is trying to do with for the future of Irish Harness Racing, which is stream races into France and which okay. is stream races across the world, basically, and get some off course revenue, you know. Okay, well, that's it. I actually didn't know that, so that's interesting. Yeah. Learned, learned something new today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been always, always, We've been always. Yeah. In Australia as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I guess we'll kind of go back as we kind of wrap up a little bit. We'll go back yeah. to Oakwood's Oakwood stud a little. Um. Okay. And then I just want to talk about like, so how many um, brood bears do you guys have right now in yearlings? R right now we uh, we we we're down to ten brood bears. Oh, you only have ten now. Okay. 10 now, yeah, yeah, we've kind of put back a little bit. We, we had 17 at one stage, but it's just a little bit too many for, mm -hmm. for for what we're doing over here. So, yeah, we've put back to 10. And right now we have, um, we only have four yearlings this year. We had a pretty bad year last year, so. Yeah. With four yearlings. Um, do you guys ever keep any of the race yourself, or do you sell all of yours? Um, <laughs> last year, last year we we um we had one in the sale and he was making he was making strong money like he was making really um good money but we fi we figured he was worth a little bit more and um we had a couple of guys that wanted to come in and a syndicate with us so we we decided at the last minute that we didn't and we we done a syndicate and we own fifty percent of, of okay. uh, 
you know, but Yearland Colt, the foreclosure Colt over Green for it there, Mayor. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about him. And he's, right. he's, a, he's a nice horse and he's training good. And, you know, when COVID 19 came along the year, we picked to have a two year old. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. how it is. It'll probably be the best one ever because of that. Yeah. Usually, when all the luck is bad, then somewhere you get good luck. So, yeah, I know, no, we're, so we're it's something, something where we, we figure we're yeah. going to be different because we've kind of just been concentrating on the breed and the breed and then and offering a lot of earlings for sale because we figured we didn't want to be racing against um people that were selling the earlings saying that, but we, we 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 want to have a bit of fun there as well. So, we we said we'll try it and see how we go. So, if you and James ever disagree, who gets the who gets the rolling vote? <laughs> or do you never do you never disagree ever? No, we never we never disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yeah no we we fairly uh, we fairly get on like it's good. We're brothers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like James is quieter, but he could be he could make his opinion known, I'm sure. So Yeah, it's a quiet one to go <laughs> watch out for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, someone asked you, which is going to be a difficult question maybe for you to answer, but is Sweet Lou or always be Mickey more popular right now in Ireland? Sweet Lou. Is there a particular Sweet. reason? Because he's already has progeny racing or? Yeah, I think that because he's a proven sire now and he's, mm -hmm. he's part of a new beaut, like obviously a world record hole, a two-year-old and um, phenomenal three-year-old career and yeah, people follow the American race in here in a big way. So I think it's because he's proven and because it's an expensive stud fee, even though it's not expensive, it is expensive for the UK and Ireland. So people probably want to hedge a safe bet, don't they, you know? So Yeah, so um, they do follow the American racing pretty closely as far as the studs go. Like, are they, I know, um, like for Brett, he said people were likely to make decisions on stallions based on American racing. Do you think it's the same? In the UK, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, it's really uh, the, that's what we follow. We follow the US, like you know, we follow all the USA racing, mm -hmm. Sores, Offspring, Yearland Sales, everything. So yeah, so I think that's why Sweet there at the moment. But um, I believe that will change if when obviously Mickey's two year olds race this year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, and then as far as um, just kind of wrapping up because it's been forty minutes already. Um, I liked the question someone asked about the BBM festival. So where do you see Oakwood Stud in five or ten years? What's what do you what's your plan for the future of Oakwood Stud? Uh, uh, we want we wanted to breed horses that was that was good enough to export, you know, because it, it's it's an expensive business. So like with the way we're trying to do things, um, we'd like to be breeding horses that's good enough to export, and that's the product that we want to. We want to turn out and we want to be selling as yearlings that people, like we said, already have a chance to buy a yearling, they have a second chance then exporting it to the US themselves or selling to the US. So, um, yeah, that's basically it, what we want to do. Breed champions, Caroline. There you go. That's the yeah. right answer. Breed yeah. champion. Yeah. So, do you have anything else you want to add or that you didn't get a chance to say or any questions you want to ask? Um, no, not really. No, I think we covered it mainly everything. Another thing what we do here as well, you know, good stud. We export um, frozen salmon from foreclosure down to Australia as well. So that's pretty good okay. for an Irish stud to do that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, we're proud of that as well. And it's that's still cool. good. It, it gets good enough numbers down there as well. So there's fouls in the ground by them now. So, yeah, it's exciting. What would you say a good book is in Ireland? Like a good book, a book of mares for a stallion? Well, I would say anything over anything over thirty mares is good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sweet Sweet Lou done fifty two last year. Oh wow! Okay, so that's a good number. Yeah, it, it, that that'd be the highest from the UK or <laughs> Ireland number of mares covered, and obviously Mickey done twenty. Okay, so not a bad first year for him either. So no, for Clouds are done thirty eight. Yeah. So good. It's a pretty solid, solid yeah. group there. Yeah. So I guess that's all I pretty much have right now, unless you have anything else you want to add. I was trying to think of something. When I talked to Brett about kangaroos, but you guys don't have anything 
kangaroo or koalas, cute Love things it. like that in Ireland. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything fun. Le 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 leprechauns, maybe. There you go. Leprechauns. <laughs> You have any of those? Have you seen any of them recently? Yeah, yeah, a lot of them lately. <laughs> All the time, I'm sure. All the time, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, sheep. Someone wrote sheep. You guys have yeah. a lot of sheep. We have sheep, yeah. <laughs> sheep there, have sheep everywhere. So. Yeah, sheep everywhere, yeah. We have cows. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, um, Guinness, obviously. Guinness, yeah, we have plenty of that. I forgot. How could I forget? Heather Vitale would get mad at me for forgetting Guinness. So, oh, and Pink Gin. Well, actually, actually, what you're talking about, Heather Vitale. Heather Vitale was a big, had a big, um, was a big help to the FDM as well. She came over in 2014, and she's um, really helped promote the the, the race and, and and the FDM unbelievably. And she she was actually the one that put the contact to Adam. We're always like about sponsoring the FDM, so mm -hmm. yeah, so that, that, that's how that happens. Good, that's good. She's important to the her and her pink gin are important to the conversation, so we'll yeah, make sure she gets included. Blue hair, don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you for joining us today. It's been fun. If you anyone else has any questions for Derek, any point, you can let us know because we'll be sure to ask him. Um, I know our Irish fans on Facebook are always um, pretty enthusiastic, so I expect them to have a lot of comments and stuff like that about this. <laughs> um, yeah, they're yeah. pretty fun, pretty fun yeah. to deal with. So, yeah. um, thank you for joining us, Derek, and say hi to Lexi and Lillian. Thanks, Lexi, for fixing the Instagram so we could do this. <laughs> yeah, we're no, good thank you, Yeah. All right. See you later. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.